Hi, in this video I'm going to make tea cozies to keep our tea warm. This type of project is really good to make the most of these little scraps we have around the house and we don't want to throw away, but they're not big enough to make anything else, so we're going to make good use of them. And of course you can make it with only one piece of material uh, and avoid all the cutting and designing and trimming and stuff. But they're going to be cute. We are also going to use some batting and any kind of paper that we can use to make the shape of the teapot. And for that we are going to use this kind of pattern that covers the whole teapot. And when you measure this to do so, uh, you have to take into account not only the length but how wide it is because if you only measure the length then it won't fit. I'm going to leave at least 3 cm seam allowance. And with this basic pattern you can modify and make different designs. I've seen uh, lots of cute animals and houses and I'm going to make a house for the big one and two for the small one which we used uh, the most. This one is for the indoors camp. So this is going to be a little house and this is going to be a cupcake and a tea bag which is quite funny. And I'm going to start with the cupcake one. I'm going to make the base with this striped fabric and then the top bit with the spotted one to make the frosting. The interior I'm going to make it with uh, the stripy one as well. The first thing I'm going to do is to cut the interior and for that I'm going to use the whole pattern. Now that I have this, I can cut my pattern where I think uh, the frosting is going to be. I'm going to use the same material for the bottom bit. And then I'm going to add the scallop pattern to the top bit so I can get the frosting. You can also have it without any scallops and just have a, a straight line and it will be as nice. And because I want this to be uh, outside, to be like it's dripping out of the bottom, I'm going to need a scallop to go under the top bit. And these are all my pieces. And now it's a matter of sewing little scraps. The first thing I'm going to do is to sew the scallop edges, uh, putting right sides together. Now that I've got them sewn, I'm going to start putting the right side out so I can start seeing my edge. And now that I have my frosting done my, with my scallop edge, I'm going to sew the bottom bit to the part that is straight on the inside of the scallops. Just what I wanted. The interior is really easy because you only have to stitch the hole. 
Um, because I want the frosting to have a bit more shape, I'm going to make an extra layer of the batting with the scallopage. And now that I have all my parts cut and sewn, it's time to... Let's try it a bit. Yay! I'm going to sew the good size and the pattern together and then I'll add the interior. After thinking for a while, I realized I don't have to make such a club sandwich and I saw the right sides, which look like this now, and the inside with this on top, which I zigzag stitch it so it doesn't move. And now I'm just going to add this to this bit and we'll have a cozy. It fits! So now that we have everything done, the only thing is to make this rough edge a bit more presentable. So I'm going to add this ribbon. And now that this is almost finished, I'm going to just see how this is not keeping the shape so I'm going to give it a few stitches and then I'm going to uh, use a red button as the cherry on top of the cake. I chose a brown thread for the stitches I'm going to make on the cherry on top of the cake. Can't stop saying that, eh? That's it then. And I just found this pom-pom at home and I'm going to add it so it's a bit more of a cherry. <laughs> Ow! And I'm going to make the second one for the same teapot. And even though I said that this is our basic pattern, we have to follow the shape we have to make. Uh, these one tea bags are more square, so they are like bags, they are like paper bags. So I'm going to have to go up quite a bit and I'm going to use a sack for that. And I'm going to use the salvage edge that the fabric uh, brings. Uh, so when I fold it, it's going to be here. I think it's a nice detail. And when we want to change directions with our seams, we just have to lift the foot and then uh, turn around our fabric and continue sewing. Mm. 
and two pieces of another cotton or anything you have around for the inside. So I'm going to use a bit of felt and I'm going to write down T and embroider it uh, with embroidery thread. And what I'm doing for the label thing, you just have to make a loop and go always back so it becomes a chain. And now that I have this, I'm going to do the same here to just make it look like the, the cord of the bag. And here I'm only going back. I stitch and then I go back to fill in the hook. And now that I have this made, I'm going to sew uh, the label on the machine. And now that I have my three parts uh, done, I'm going to put them together. So the brown one goes inside the bathing and this one inside the, the proper tea bag thing. And the top bit didn't need a seam because uh, now we'll do it once it's folded. So it's just folding the sides in and then folding again. I'm pinning the bottom so I can sew the seam and I'm making some, not pleats, but I'm just pinching the corners so it keeps the, the shape. And even though I kept this bit uh, because I liked it, I'm not liking it when I put it on the teapot because I think it's too tall for it. So I'm going to roll it so it has more of a back shape and that's it and now it's time for the big one I had the idea of making a little house, but because it's Easter, let's make an Easter egg. So for the Easter egg, we'll need a pattern and for that you just need to draw a neck shape and then fold it in half to get uh, the perfect shape, like so. So it's symmetrical. And because it's so big, I'm going to do it so it's on its side. So I'm going to cut a bit at the bottom uh, so it has a base and a way in and out. And the first one I'm going to cut is the inside, the lining. And I'm going to cut it now as well.
And now that I have all my pieces, I'm going to sew them together. Always remember to sew right sides together. And then, um, this has not the shape of the egg yet, and I'll cut it once it's already all uh, together. When I do this kind of patchwork, I always sew them two by twos because it's much easier to sew couples and then put them together than sewing a, a whole bunch and having to drag all the fabric. And when you have everything sewn together, it's really important to press it so your seams are not bulky. And then I'm going, and well, and now I'm going to sew right sides together, except for the bottom bit, and the same with the inners. And I have all the layers here, and we can do this easily. I'm going to cut the bottom a bit because it's too long and then I'll sew it all together and that will be it. And now that I have my little sandwich in all together, the interior is orange and we have the batting. Um, I'm going to sew it together with a ribbon and for that I am going to change the, the thread in the machine. It's going to be yellow so it matches and that will be it. do it with the third one as well, didn't I? So this is the final result. I'm quite pleased. It doesn't really have to be only Easter and it's quite colorful and it suits the teapot as well and it fits which is like the main bit. It's a bit tricky you have to slip it a bit but well it does.
hope you've enjoyed this video and let me know what other shape you thought of and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss anything and that's it really going to drink three liters of tea now bye see you next week Thank you.